So thank you. Thank you, um, everybody, um, for the invitation here, and thanks for the previous presentations. It's very interesting and impressive to see, actually, where we are going with digital learning resources. This is by far not a new topic in Europe. Uh, we've been working on it, of course, since already beginning of 2000, rather intensively, but uh, once it's starting to materialize, that's very um, nice to see. Um, my name is... Uh, let me show you the organization that I work for. I'm part of the European Commission, as was already uh, mentioned earlier, but the Joint Research Center as such has a specific role in supporting the policymakers with evidence. So we are a research center and we are based actually in Sevilla. Uh, a lot of other uh, things are also studied, but in my unit we are looking at the human capital and employment. So within that, there's a team of about uh, 10 people looking at uh, digital education, including digital resources, of course, and all the practices that take place around it. Uh, now that there's so much um, focus on policies at the European level, it is, of course, interesting to also know what kind of evidence can we gather about it. For one reason, that we know that the policies that are done are the right ones, and of course, for the other, that those uh, the evidence can actually lead policymaking to new directions and new priorities. Um, education, as you know, is a rather tricky field to study. Uh, the effect of uh, digital technologies on learning outcomes is something that takes time to mature, first of all. But also, to study it, it's very hard to isolate the effect of digital technologies on actual learning outcomes. And that's why I put there a tray, it actually goes with the Rafal, that's from NAFA, you know, NASA, the space agency in the US, so it goes with the theme of a heavy Vulcan launch there. Um, education doesn't happen in vacuum, so for researchers, it's very hard to isolate the effect of anything in education. What is it a teacher does? Is it the school? Is it the peers? Is it the home effect? And so on. So there's a big challenge in that in general. Uh, however, we know that there's a lot of good stuff going on in education. We have invested it for a long time. But the news travel very uh, slowly. And even uh, still, you know, nowadays we see uh, headlines like that. I don't know if many of you remember, this was a couple of years back. There was a PISA 2012 results restudied from the point of view of ICT. Now, does ICT actually have impact on learning outcomes? The results were devastating. Uh, as a researcher, we had many, many doubts about this study. The questions that were used for ICT use in schools were quite uh, terrible to say. And uh, another thing, are these kind of outcome measures like PISA or external evaluations, are they really the best way to study how ICT impacts on learning outcomes? Might it be that these uh, are skewed to the old school uh, condition that is there? So maybe we should have a new style it's a question, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer to that. As a researcher, though, what I'm interested in is seeing evidence coming out that actually is able to pinpoint the effects of technologies on learning. Here's one study that we found, um, which is also interesting because it's not looking only at the digital technologies, but it's also taking into account the openness. And this is another thing that uh, there's a lot of EU level and member state level focus on open education uh, for different type of reasons. It could be that public money should be spent openly and so on. But do we really know the effects? And this study, uh, which was very interesting, showed that, um, that there was actually some, as a researcher, how they always say, uh, there were gains, relatively small, not consistent across all uh, digital materials. But anyhow, they were able to show, I'm, I'm sorry, the digital education 
was no, uh, let's say, open textbooks was no worse than uh, uh, commercial uh, textbooks or any other textbooks that were used, and there were some gains also there. So as a researcher in JRC, we were very inspired. What would that mean uh, for us in Europe? Could we actually reproduce such study in a European context? Um, we started looking around, and such studies are not done in Europe yet. So what we decided is to look for an example of a country where we could possibly run such study. So that's, uh, I will now go and tell you a few words about the study, which of course takes, took place uh, in Polish context. And, uh, but I want you to uh, keep in mind that the results, even results are not so important in this case. What is important is the method of doing a study and could it be reproduced in another country? We really hope to create something like a cookbook so that these kind of studies could be produced in the future in a bigger scale so that we could start gathering the evidence in Europe. So our study had two questions. We wanted to uh, do an impact evaluation of the Polish e-textbook um, initiative and analyze its efficiency and effectiveness. Efficiency related to money. How much uh, do you get for a certain amount of money? And the question was explore the costs and savings associated to e-textbooks. The other part was the effectiveness. So are these actually effective for learning outcomes? So we wanted to look, can we estimate the impact of the use of these e-textbooks on pupils' academic achievements. Are there interest in one or the two of the topics? Because the time is limited. <laughs> the, two. Two. OK, OK. Let's go um, to two then directly. Um, so basically, in ideal world, uh, we need an intervention. For this kind of studies, we need an intervention. We need a situation that sort of uh, takes place, and there's an intervention. And in this case, it was the digital e-school program within the e-textbooks that were quickly mentioned. So the 62 um, textbooks, entire textbooks that were produced in an open format in digital that could be also printed, right? They could be printed, yeah. So ideally, until from let's say about 95 until about 2012, there had been the business as usual, which in Poland was a free market. They had a number of uh, uh, textbook publishers that had been uh, producing the textbooks for the entire market. Um, we come to uh, the program and then uh, it's a limited intervention. So as a researcher, you think if we just look what happened before and after, we know what's the impact. Of course, life is not that easy. Uh, there was a new policy reform in the mean meanwhile, also in Poland, which for a researcher messed up the scheme a little bit. But um, that's just as a disclaimer there. Um, so that's about the cost savings. This is the Basically, the models that you would be looking at, uh, each country has a different uh, models. You have to look at the regulatory frameworks, public sector activities. Is it a public good, for example, by the ministry to produce free material? In some countries, yes. In other countries, it's only um, the publishing industry uh, who makes that part. So you have to look at the stakeholders in general. You have to do the analysis. Here we analyze then how the market actors actually flow. An interesting thing that might be also related to the later points, uh, uh, Rafael already said that textbooks have to be credited by the ministry and the choice of the textbooks is by teachers. But actually what is very important is who buys the textbooks is the parents. So it's, even if it's a free market and parent is the payer of a textbook, parent is 
not the end customer with the choice because they can't choose the product. It's been chosen to them by the teacher. So teachers actually have a lot of power in this model to um, make the choice and make the parents pay. And what had happened in Poland was that the market was a little bit too pushy towards that um, making money. I will not talk, uh, go, this is also an interesting part, and please talk to me about this if you're interested later. Uh, this is then uh, our sort of study set up for Poland. And just to tell you that um, to get to, to understand what's the impact of some intervention, you have to know the whole market. So then you start actually looking, what is the entire textbook market in Poland? You have to understand the value. You know it's a, a, a private publishing industry. It's very hard to get those figures. So in, in terms of calculating what is the impact of one small program in entire uh, world, well, market is pretty hard, but these are the figures that we kind of uh, came out after a lot of investigation. The impact, if we think of this uh, program, was about 4% uh, of market. And the titles, entire titles, also the same there. A uh, very small amount of textbooks by 2013 uh, in Poland had digital components. So these are the commercial people. They said, we have some, and so on. So collecting this data is really hard, but it's possible. That's what I want. <laughs> Even if I talk about challenges, I would like to leave you with the idea that you can get this information somehow. And also as a researcher, we would like to support you with the cookbook. So let me just go and say the, uh, the setup for the learning outcomes. Uh, this is the idea, of course, that we have a comparison group. We have business as usual until here, the textbook program. We have the outcomes, both groups uh, who are using e-textbooks and the people who are not using anything. So idea is that treatment group and comparison group, nothing. And uh, it could be, in this case, also commercial material. These are important, the variables that could be taken. I'm going to take two minutes and then... Uh, um, so. In Poland, we had a very interesting situation because we were able to get the right data, more or less. So in order to do that kind of a study, you need to be looking at, the, of course, the e-textbook use its variable. Who is using it? In this case, we had a possibility to um, tap on a survey that the ministry had done, and uh, there we were able to locate the schools who said they are using the e-textbooks and compare that with the outcome variable. In this case, the learning outcomes were the standardized uh, testing taken um, every certain year in Poland by certain cohorts. So that was our outcome variable. And now you can think in your own country, do you have something that could facilitate such studies it doesn't need to be the final exams necessarily because maybe those are not the best ones. Maybe you have some other uh, study uh, well, outcome material which is digital competence or uh, which is civic competence or whatever. But the uh, main thing is that you need to have those two variables, the usage of digital material and the outcome variable. You also want to have something to control this uh, setup. So here we had the um, predictors of e-textbook use, and of course the previous performance of a school. So here the important thing is that study was at the school level. It was not individual level. So uh, we couldn't get to that level, but maybe in your case, you can think of doing it uh, on the individual level. So of course, this is still, uh, let's say, uh, study in progress, like everything, and these are just very preliminary, preliminary results. What it looks like, in this case in Poland, the textbooks were actually very little used by the time the survey was done. So um, that also makes, of course, our results not very, um, let's say, uh, big as such. But we could, there was some uh, 
you know, even if at the big grant level it says that the e-resources doesn't affect the performance or its variation at the end test, um, they, there's still small, uh, you know, parts that are, look interesting. For example, it seems that e-resources may play more positive role in, in primary education in the case of Poland. Also, what was interesting, and I think also for you this is an interesting to reflect upon, the results are influencing the, the patterns of use in the classroom. So it's not, how do we know how they are used in the classroom? You know, we saw a very interesting previous presentation, and the video was very telling. But how do we know that kids actually get their hands on them? Or is it just the teacher who's showing uh, resources? on the you know, 3D things on the screen? Um, are the students producing something? Are they using them at home? So those, the usage patterns are really key here to understand the impact, but we have very little ways to, to get the data now. And of course, everybody's mentioning learning analytics and data that we can get from those platforms. So exploring those sites would be very interesting, and if you wanna talk to me about that, further, uh, I would be very interested. Uh, just to finish up, um, we were talking with uh, Deidre that there's a possibility if somebody's interested in this study, we can make an a online meeting, 45 minutes lecture, and uh, so the results could be discussed with the scientists in details and talk about the method and cookbooks. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.